afternoon. My name is Jean Fox and I'm a consultant in gastroenterology. I was asked to speak to you today about um, irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease, IBS and IBD. What are the differences between the two? It's a very good question and it's something that patients are often confused about because the first two initials of, bo of both disorders are the same, IBS and IBD. So irritable bowel syndrome is a syndrome. There's no biological marker that tells us whether or not you have this disorder. It's not a disease, it's a disorder. There's no um, physical characteristic or physical finding or biomarker that can tell us that you have irritable bowel syndrome. Essentially, we make the diagnosis based on symptom criteria. People who have irritable bowel syndrome, and by the way, it's more common than you might think, approximately 10 or 20 percent of the people in the community have symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. Um, and people who have irritable bowel syndrome may report diarrhea or constipation associated with abdominal pain, bloating, gassiness, and discomfort. As I said, there's no biological marker, so we use that symptom criteria to make the diagnosis. And we often, the physician or nurse practitioner who's caring for you might ask you some questions to help discern whether or not you have any worrisome symptoms which would require further evaluation, such as rectal bleeding, such as weight loss or anemia or vomiting. Um, and in the absence of those symptoms, people who meet the criteria might be offered a variety of um, treatment options to help manage their symptoms. Things such as fiber supplements to help uh, regulate the bowels, uh, perhaps medications that help alleviate spasm. Uh, a good first line of therapy, which we often might pursue in patients, is just keeping a food diary and trying to eliminate those foods that are um, troublesome or exacerbate your symptoms. Inflammatory bowel disease, on the other hand, is associated with bleeding, usually rectal bleeding associated with diarrhea and abdominal pain. This um, disease, and it is a disease, is usually quite apparent by doing an endoscopic evaluation such as a colonoscopy. During a colonoscopy, the physician will often see ulcerations or edema or um, decreased vascular markings, abnormalities in the blood vessel pattern in the um, large bowel, which will give them the indication that this is what's going on. So it's generally quite apparent at the time of endoscopy if somebody has symptomatic inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is divided into two subtypes. Generally, we think about ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, the difference being Crohn's disease can involve the small intestine as well as the large intestine, whereas ulcerative colitis is limited to the large intestine. Inflammatory bowel disease um, often requires steroids or immunosuppressive medications uh, to help get it under control. Patients with irritable bowel syndrome don't require the close surveillance that our patients with inflammatory bowel disease would. For instance, patients with inflammatory bowel disease often require follow-up laboratory testing and often require uh, repeat colonoscopic evaluations for surveillance and checkups. Something that's important but can also be confusing to patients is irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease can occur together. So the same patient who has inflammatory bowel disease might also have irritable bowel syndrome. And this can sometimes um, create challenges for the physician or, or nurse practitioner who's providing your care um, to to know which one is active and which, which needs to be treated. Often they can figure that out by doing laboratory tests and a colonoscopic evaluation. But it's important to remember that these two can occur together. So if you happen to have inflammatory bowel disease and are having symptoms of abdominal pain, 
um, may be associated with bloating and diarrhea or constipation. It may be irritable bowel syndrome and not your inflammatory bowel disease that is causing those symptoms. Um, one of the ways we differentiate um, symptomatically is whether or not there, there's blood in the stools. Usually with uh, exacerbations of colitis, there, there will be bloody diarrhea, but oftentimes a patient might require an endoscopic evaluation with a colonoscopy and laboratory tests to help really sort that out. In patients with in irritable bowel syndrome who have pain as their predominant symptom, sometimes we use antispasmodic medications which can cut down on spasm. Sometimes if the pain is more chronic or refractory, we might resort to using antidepressant type medications and we're not using the antidepressants for mood alteration per se, but we're using them more for their pain modulating properties. Interestingly, some antidepressant medications can alter pain sensation and we might use these in people who have irritable bowel syndrome to help with chronic pain. Also important to note though, is that if you do have a mood disorder, if you have anxiety or depression that hasn't been adequately addressed, it's important to work on that as part of your treatment for irritable bowel syndrome because we do know patients who have poorly controlled anxiety or depression tend to fare worsely from the standpoint of their irritable bowel syndrome. Thank you for your time. My name is Dr. Jean Fox.